The Resurrection At last, Jesus was at rest. The long day of torture had ended, and as the last rays of setting sun ushered in the Sabbath, the Son of God laid quietly in Joseph's tomb, his work completed. His bruised hands folded upon his pulseless breast. He rested through the sacred hours of the Sabbath day. Satan rejoiced. He dared to hope that the Savior would not take up his life again. He claimed the Lord's body and set his guards around the tomb, seeking to hold Christ a prisoner forever. But he was bitterly disappointed and angry when his angels fled at the approach of the heavenly messenger that early Sunday morning. When he saw Christ come forth in triumph, he knew that his kingdom would have an end, and that he must finally die. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrow and acquainted with the bitterest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way when he went by. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weakness he carried, it was our sorrows that weighed him down, and we thought his troubles were a punishment from God for his own sins. Christ was treated as we deserve that we may be treated as he deserves. He was condemned for our sins in which he had no share, that we might be justified by his righteousness in which we had no share. He suffered the death that was ours that we may receive the life that was his. By his wounds, we are healed. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him, endured the cross despising its shame and sat down at the right hand of God. Think about all he endured when sinful people did such terrible things to him so that you will not grow weary and give up. Set your sight on the realities of heaven where Christ sits at God's right hand in a place of honor and power. Let heaven fill your thoughts. Do not think about things down here on earth. For we died when Christ died, and our real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ who is our real life is revealed to the world, we will share in all his glory. For we are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God that we may declare the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once we were not a people, but now we are the people of God. Once we had not received mercy, but now we have received mercy. So dear friends, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, prepare your minds for action. Be self-controlled, set your hope fully on the grace to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who has called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, Be holy, because I am holy. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that we were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to us by our parents, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, a lamb without blemish and without spot. Our attitude should be the same as that of Jesus Christ, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God as something to be grasped, but made himself nothing by taking on the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him a name that is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, Every knee should bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. To him belongs, power, and riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and praise, forever, and ever. Amen.